coming up on Fresh Dew with Pastor Inkechi Ene. Whether you have $12 million, 12 million naira, or 12 cents, or 12 kobo, it doesn't really matter how much you have. You can enjoy economic immunization in this economic system. Wherever you're at now, again, I repeat, if you've got $12 billion, 12 million pounds, 12 million naira, 12 dollars, 12 naira, 12 kobo, 12 cents, whatever it is you have, whatever the financial level you are at today, you can enjoy economic immunization. It's our anniversary this July. The Carpenters Church celebrates 30 years of the undiluted word, integrity, excellence, agape love, spirit-filled worship and praise. Join us live on our e-church this Sunday, the 5th of July by 9 a.m. The Carpenters Table. Music ministration by the New Wine Choir of the Carpenters Church. Host, Pastor Kichi Enemis, the Carpenter's Table. It's time to celebrate! Hello and welcome to Fresh Dew. I am Pastor Nkechi Ene and it's always my pleasure to welcome you to every single episode of Fresh Dew. Fresh Dew is a program designed just for you. It's designed to build you up and give you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Today on Fresh Dew, we continue our message series, Another Economic System. And this is part three of that message series. And if you've missed, Part one and two, please go back and look for it on the YouTube channel, on the Facebook page, on the website, everywhere, so you can catch up with this exciting new message series, Another Economic System. Our text was from Isaiah 55, and we read the whole chapter, so you need to bear with me as we read the 13 verses here. And it begins with one word, which I really love. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend money for what is not bread, and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me, hear and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you the sure mercies of David. Indeed, I have given him as a witness to the people, a leader and commander for the people. Surely you shall call a nation you do not know, and nations who do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down, and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth, Forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, 
and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out with joy and be led out with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing before you, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come of the cypress tree, and instead of the briar shall come of the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Amen. We define three words, two words actually, three definitions. We define economy as the state of a country or region in terms of the production and consumption of goods and services and the supply of money. Then we also define economy as the administration of the material resources of an individual community or country and the state of those resources. Then we define economic as pertaining to or having reference to economy or to economics capable of yielding a profit. The first thing we began to do was part A, which is getting to know about this system. We're talking about another economic system. We want to know about this system. And that's what we're still doing, getting to know about the system. We learned some exciting truths in the past two episodes. We said, number one, God set it up. God is the author of this economic system we're talking about. And this is an economic system that de-emphasizes and even bypasses money. It is a complete paradigm shift from what we understand of economics as we just defined it. Second thing we said is that God set it up for everyone, everyone. It is not an economic system for poor people only. It is not an economic system for rich people only. It is an economic system for everyone who thirsts. And that's what we're still looking at. That it is God, it is God who set up this economic system. Recall what we said last episode, and I gave you my own definition of who everyone is. I said everyone is anyone who has not yet reached perfect maximum expression and administration of their material resources in their family, business, or even in the country that they live in. That is everyone that needs to know about this system. So we're still looking at the second point, still pushing a bit further, that God set it up for everyone. So child of God, you are not excluded from this announcement. Remember we said, the prophet said, oh, everyone who thirsts. It was an, it was a, the announcement. He said, come three times in verse one, an urgent in invitation to you. Yes, you, no one is left out, except you can convince me that you have reached maximum expression and administration of the material resources that could be made available to you. That's not possible. There is still more. There is still better. There is another economic system available to you. It's important to note that this is a spiritual system. And in spiritual things, there really is no demarcation between rich and poor. And that's what I want us to really understand today. When we're saying that it is for everyone, like, like I said earlier, don't think, oh, this is a message to help them poor people. Or don't think this is a message oh, for all them rich guys. No, no. In spiritual things, there really is no demarcation. God doesn't really look at how much you have. God looks at your heart. God looks at other things about you. That's what matters more. He doesn't measure you by how much is in your account or how much is not in your account. Remember the, the widow who gave, who gave her last two mites? And Jesus said to all the people around, this woman gave the most and gave much more than anyone else. And literally, she was a poor woman. So this is not an economic system just for the poor or just for the rich. Because in spiritual things, there is no demarcation between rich or poor. And I want to show you this story. It's one of my favorite stories. I have a, I have a message which I preached many years ago on Fresh Dew called The Stench of Poverty. And I'll probably take it again you know, soon, because it, it fits well with what's going on now. Very powerful message, if I say so myself. The stench of poverty. And I want to, you know, look at something we, we picked up in that story from Luke 16. From Luke 16 and verse 19. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen 
and fed sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate, desiring, not that, to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, I was, to make it worse, the dogs came and licked his sores. That was bad. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And being in torments in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried out and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. And Abraham, Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted and you are tormented. This is a story that a lot of people erroneously use to, you know, to propagate some unseen virtues of poverty. And they say, well, Lazarus was poor. And see, the poor man went to heaven. And oh, look, or went to Abraham's bosom. And oh, look, um, the, the rich man, not good to be rich. The rich man went off to, 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 to Hades, as it were. Is that really what the story is telling us? There are actually a lot of similarities. And we're looking at the fact that this economic system God offers you is for everyone, rich or poor. And this story is a beautiful story that shows this truth that there is no demarcation in spiritual things between rich or poor. There really isn't any. Look at this. A lot of similarity, I said, between the rich man and Lazarus the poor beggar. Let's look at the rich man first and listen to this. The rich man was not fulfilled and he needed to be satisfied, but he only discovered after he died. Now that was too late. He didn't know, he didn't understand that there was something that he needed to be fulfilled or satisfied with that went beyond what he could see. He assumed that he had reached the peak of his material capabilities and financial wealth, and he thought he was satisfied, but he needed to be fulfilled. He found out too late. Now imagine if he connected with another economic system. We've, we've established that this is superior, better economic system because it is God that set it up. I mean, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out that something God sets up is definitely going to be better than something man whom God created set up. So this system is not set up by the World Bank or CBN or IMF. It is set up by the creator himself. Now imagine if this rich man understood that there was a covenant he could have found out about, or this rich man plugged in to another economic system. It means that what he thought he had was nothing compared to what he could have gotten in another economic system. So he found out too late, that's the point. He didn't understand there was something better. Imagine again, I say, the potential wealth he could have enjoyed. And imagine, more importantly, the lives he could have impacted if he had connected with that wealth. Remember we said there are three types of thirst we looked at. The thirst to go from, to a better life and stop you know, struggling from hand to mouth. The thirst to... To, to be an influence in, 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 in the kingdom and be able to you know, touch, touch people with lives and all that. And the thirst to have some kind of guarantee that what you have is there to stay and you can't just lose it just like that. That's the kind of thirst that you need to have to engage this economic system. And this rich man found out too late. He found out too late. Well, why did I say there was similarity between him and the poor? poor man Lazarus. Well, let's look at Lazarus. Was he fulfilled? Like people try to tell you in religious circles that, oh, well, at least it's better to be poor, though he was lying at the gate of the rich man and dogs were licking his sores. He was poor. He was sick. Are you telling me he was fulfilled? Because he went, ended up in Abraham's bosom? No, Ab the poor man himself also was not fulfilled. The Bible says he was desiring to be fed. He wanted more, but he couldn't connect. He didn't know that there was something better in the covenant. Obviously, he was a covenant man because he ended up in Abraham's bosom. Obviously, he was a righteous man because he ended up in Abraham's bosom. But he didn't know. Again, just like the rich man, he also found out some things too late. 
Yet he was a righteous man. He was a poor man. He found out too late. He found out that there were other things he could have enjoyed here on earth. Remember in the story, Abraham said to him, said to the rich man, you know, why are you complaining? You enjoyed good things. Likewise, Lazarus enjoyed evil things. The Bible calls the life of Lazarus something that was full of evil things. And what identified Lazarus was his poverty, his begging, his sickness, and his being abandoned along the road, and nobody could help him. Imagine if he discovered. Imagine if he desired for more than just crumbs. He was desiring for crumbs when he was a covenant man and there was another economic system available for him. Imagine if he connected with that economic system. Imagine the impact, not just the wealth he could have had, but he had the righteousness. And right there at the gate of a man who in our time would call an unbeliever who was wealthy, he couldn't speak to him about the gospel because he was desiring crumbs. Both of them found out some things way too late. Everyone, it doesn't matter whether you're rich or you're poor, everyone is available, should be available to this economic system. Neither of them was thirsty for the right change. Neither of them knew what they really needed until it was too late. May that not be your story in the name of Jesus Christ. This story doesn't even cover an example of a rich man who is righteous. We see a rich man who was unrighteous and we see a poor man who was righteous. And again, I repeat that you have some people preaching what is not true, using this story to try to, you know, say that it is good to be poor and stay in your poverty so you will go to heaven. You can go to heaven and be rich. That has nothing to do with it. But this story doesn't even give the example of a rich man who is righteous. So what if you're a rich man who is righteous? Is this economic system for, for you? Yes, because there is always more to discover in God. If you're plugged into the global economic system, though you're rich and you're righteous, one day that source will run dry. But if you're rich and you're righteous and you plug yourself into God's own economic system, then you're plugging yourself into a guarantee of wealth that will last, of wealth that will impact the kingdom, and wealth that will keep you going from glory to glory. Because with God, it is always getting better. So the source of water of the global economic system will one day run dry and cease to satisfy you. And that should not be your story. In this economic system that we're talking about today, that source never runs dry. Now listen, runs dry. This system offers what I like to call an economic immunization. Glory be to God. An economic immunization. In this time of the pandemic, at the time this is first being preached, you know, everybody's looking for some kind of immunization. How can you prevent what's going on? How is there any way you can get an immunization to help yourself not get this disease or whatever? I'm talking to you today about an economic immunization. And that is what this economic system we're talking about in this message series offers you, child of God. You can be immunized from the effects of the global crisis economically. You can be immunized from the financial downturn it is going on in every country and every community, literally. You can be immunized in this economic system. Look at Jeremiah 17 from verse 5, the NLT. This is what the Lord says. Cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans and turn their hearts away from the Lord. They are like stunted shrubs in the desert with no hope for the future. They will live in the barren wilderness on the salty flats where no one lives. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord. And I've made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat. They are not bothered by the economic heat. They are not bothered by the economic crisis. They are not bothered by the exchange rate that has changed. They are not bothered by what's going on. They are all worried by the long months of drought. Their leaves stay green. Their leaves stay green. They're immunized. Their leaves stay green. This is Bible, so it is true. This is Bible, so it is possible in your life. This is Bible, so it is not a fiction or a, or a fairy tale. This is truth. 
their leaves stay green. Regardless of the economic heat, their leaves stay green. They're not worried by the drought. Their leaves stay green and they go right on producing delicious fruits. The issue is who do you put your trust in, child of God? When you put your trust in anything that man sets up, such as the world's banking system, you are snookered. In fact, the scripture says you are cursed. That's what this Bible says here. This curse is the man who puts his trust. You, you just cut yourself off from the benefits of the blessing that is yours. So the issue is who have you placed your trust, your hope, and your confidence in? There is economic heat all around, child of God. But where have you placed your hope? Whether you have $12 million, 12 million naira, or 12 cents, or 12 kobo, it doesn't really matter how much you have. You can enjoy economic immunization in this economic system. Wherever you're at now, again, I repeat, if you've got $12 billion, 12 million pounds, 12 million naira, 12 dollars, 12 naira, 12 kobo, 12 cents, whatever it is you have, whatever the financial level you are at today, you can enjoy economic immunization. And the truth is this, if you watch CNN, you watch channels, you watch BBC, you're not going to see testimonies of people who are immunized in this economic system. You're not going to hear about people who are getting jobs in this period. You're not going to hear about people who are getting promoted in this period. You're not going to hear about people who are, who are buying cars in this period. You're not going to hear about single families who are providing palliatives to communities all by themselves because they have abundance. You are not going to be told about those things. But I can tell you, there are people who are immunized. There are people whose roots are deep in the river of God that never runs dry. There are people who have plugged into this economic system. Their testimonies time will not allow me to share some of them. Maybe next episode I will. People who have plugged in and allowed themselves to be immunized. When the scripture tells you in Psalm 91, the thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, it also applies to the economic crisis going on. People are losing their jobs. People are getting broke and in poverty. But your case can be different. When men are cast down, you can say there's a lifting up. When you plug into this system, understanding that it was set up for everyone, rich or poor, who is thirsty and wants to know what God has set up for them, there is economic immunization available for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for this economic system that you set up. We love you so much and our hearts are open to get to know about the system more and even to begin to understand the system better. We give you praise, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. You have so many questions about your life and life in general. Why? When? How? What? Who? And the list goes on. Brother, Jesus is the answer to every question and he loves you just the way you are. He loves you too much to leave you this way. He's knocking on the door of your heart. Will you make a decision for a change today to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God? If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud, meaning it from the depth of your heart, according to Romans 10, 8 to 13, and you will be saved. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you are the Son of God and that you died for me and rose again just to save me. Come into my heart and make me brand new as you have promised. I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray, amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. We can help you grow in your new faith so that what has just happened on the inside will surely be reflected in your everyday life. Please call us 
at 0700 Fresh Dew or email us at saved at freshdew.tv and we'll be here for you. Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. It's our anniversary this July. The Carpenters Church celebrates 30 years of the undiluted word, integrity, excellence, agape love, spirit-filled worship and praise. Join us live on our e-church this Sunday, the 5th of July by 9 a.m. The Carpenters Table. Music ministration by the New Wine Choir of the Carpenters Church. Host, Pastor Kichi Enemesis. The Carpenters Table. It's time to celebrate! Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 3737 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Freshdew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Freshdew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website www.freshdew.tv Once again, thanks for being with us today and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life. <laughs>